Okay, let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Vice President Hammond? Here. Trustee Clements? Here. Trustee Parr? Here. And Trustee Schwartz is absent. I believe he is on his way. Okay, thanks. Oh, thank you. Um, great. Well, thanks for coming. I'm going to just start by thanking the Haldane School Foundation. They put on a uh, spectacular Saturday night event at Glenwood, annual event. Um, I spoke with Shannon Keegan, the president of the school foundation, and she said that they raised over $20,000. Um, so a big thank you to the school foundation, for the bo to the board of the school foundation, John Hedlund, who is here. Um, all the board members, they have a big board. They all do a lot of really important things. Um, and thanks to everybody who attended, administrators, teachers, um, board members, parents, community members, uh, the people who attended is really what allowed everybody to raise money. So um, it's a big thank you to everybody. It's important stuff. Um, and on our agenda, the first thing here is our budget, which we will get to. But um, we wanted to slide in first with a uh, special announcement about our high school principal uh, search. So, I'll leave it to so um, as you know, um, we bet we started a, a search for the high school principal. And as we were going through the search and meeting some of our candidates, I, we realized that we had the perfect candidate already here in our district. So our perfect candidate has 20 years in the district, came to Haldane in 1998 as an elementary school teacher. She has been in many administrative roles in the district, including the middle school principal for the past two years um, and the middle school coordinator, worked with the high school principal when it was a 612 school, so she has uh, familiarity with the high school. She has a knowledge of students, um, families, and communities due to her long time with um, our district. She has um, special, um, she's specially supporting us and helping us give, and she has um, understanding of the master schedule, how it works here. And for anybody that has ever entered Haldane High School, you'll know that it is a very difficult schedule to understand and to follow, so um, that's quite a feat. Um, she has worked very closely with our strategic plan and the group that created it and understands the vision and the direction of the district. Um, she understands the scheduling needs of the high school, the need for high, high academic standards, and balanced with social emotional support for our students. She understands what's coming, with the, which is the four plus one model of regents, um, which is a change from the past and best ways to leverage and meet the needs of our kids. And she will assist with um, our work with BOCES to redevelop the Haldane Academy. So um, Julia Sniffen um, will be reassigned and she will move from the high school, uh, excuse me, middle school to the high school and we are very glad to have you. So congratulations, Julia. It certainly doesn't feel like 20 years. Um, <laughs> but what I would like to say uh, to the community, to the students, to the teachers, to the parents, is that uh, I am incredibly dedicated to this community. Uh, I will continue to serve and do what's best for the students of Haldane. Uh, I'm ready to take on this new challenge. Uh, we were talking before about change, and uh, I actually don't mind change. I really am looking forward to this, and uh, I'm excited to work with everybody. Uh, as many of you know, my door has always been open, and it will continue to be open. Uh, so thank you to the board. Uh, to Dr. Bowers, my fellow administrators, uh, for the support uh, in this next venture for myself here at Haldane. So thank you. Thank you. 
And I'll just say that, um, you know, we're congratulating Julie on her next step, and it is a congratulations, but I would like to congratulate us because <laughs> this is awesome. I am so excited um, for Julie to be the high school principal. I think that she's going to do a fantastic job. Um, she has all the right ingredients um, for what the community needs, what the, what the students need, and um, I'm feeling really great about it. I feel really lucky um, as a board member to be able to say, Julie Sniffen's our next high school principal. Like, I'm really excited about that. Um, so thank you uh, for letting us be able to say that. So <laughs> it's if really I cool. could just add a couple of additional points. Um, tomorrow a letter will be going out um, and we will, it will be going out to both the middle school and high school students as well as the families. Um, announcing this, so um, please take a look for it. It's it's on its way. Could you just continue? I know. Well, actually, does anyone else have anything else they need to say about? Have, um, I came in late, so has it? Have we clarified the effective date and? No, we need to. We're so gonna. We haven't done that quite that. right, and that will be in the letter. It will be as of July first. Uh, but um, Julie will also be spending a lot of time with the high school students for the rest of the spring. And there are a number of events that she'll be taking part in. And uh, so she will be a regular, uh, regular face around the high school, along with um, Chris Solomon and myself. So between now and July 1st, uh, Dr. Bowers and Chris Solomon continue on with their tag teaming. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie Sniffen is the, the third part of that tag team on occasion. Mm -hmm. but. Julie is still the middle school principal for the moment. Right. So everything kind of continues as is um, until July 1st, right? right? Um, and then on July 1st, Julie becomes the high school principal and we will have a fantastic middle school principal to July welcome. 1st. So we are, in the, we are in the process of screening candidates and knowing that this was a possibility, we kind of kept that in the back of our minds as we were, were screening. Um, the people that are coming forward were explaining that it could have been a high school or a middle school position. Would they have an interest in both? And, and actually every candidate that's come through at this point has said yes, they would have an interest. But we will be re-advertising tomorrow on OLAS and so it'll be shifting from a high school principal to a middle school principal. Um, I did call the members of the interview committee for the high school today and um, explain the situation and asked if they would want to continue on. Most of them want to still be on the committee for the middle school principal, but if there's anybody else out there that has an interest in being part of the middle school um, search committee, please let us know as soon as possible and we'll put you on the list. We hope to have um, candidates coming um, to the committee within the next few weeks and then hopefully beginning of June we'll have a, a finalist. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Um, something else you mentioned, Diana, I'll just uh, say it, is that the students are going to be informed tomorrow students. as well. I know you said there's a letter going home to the community, but students are students. actually getting like a uh, the same letter. The same letter tomorrow, so they'll be part of the right. conversation. Both high school and middle school. And when there's a letter like that, do you teachers hand it out in school? Do they they get it as part of like a homeroom yes. or something like that? Thank you. Yep. And it will be the same letter that goes to the community. But we didn't want the students to find out, you know, at when they got home. We wanted them to understand from the beginning, and if there were questions, we're here to answer them. So they probably already know. Because yeah. the high, the staff, the high school staff got to, you know, we're told this this afternoon, so. Yes. Well, actually, the K twelve we invited K twelve faculty and staff today, so it was everybody in the district. Okay. Great. Okay. Awesome. Um, so let's uh, let's rewind. Let's go to the budget. Um, Okay, so tonight there are no changes to, to talk about because the board adopted the budget at the April 18th meeting. Um, tonight is the budget hearing and um, when the budget is presented in the uh, three-part format, 
as required by by the state. Um, so it, just to summarize uh, what we've been talking about and the things that are in the final adopted buzz budget is um, we don't always just want to spend less, but we want to identify where the best place to spend our funds on is. And um, you know we're talking about change, and every year we, we want to move forward with change, not just for the sake of change, but to improve and to stay with the times. So um, the better choices about what to spend the money on this year, um, we're continuing our staff development with year three of the uh, development process for the strategic plan. Um, the second cohort for the new Tech Network Summer Institute um, is in the 1718 budget. Leadership and coaching training, um, adding elementary school and middle school enrichment programs. There's a summer kindergarten transition program. Um, the athletic trainer that started this year in 1617 will continue. Um, new allocations for athletic equipment and uniform and attire and to continue the technology support and access that were also um, in reinstated this year. So here's the summary, and I see that in the title, that should be 2017-18 revenue <laughs> recap. Oops. Um, but the tax levy at the limit is 18,952,594. We have uh, still have some use of reserves in our revenue side of the budget. We have our final state aid figures. We have tuition revenue based on uh, students that we know um, at this time are tuitioning in. It could change. It could go up. We could get a couple more. We usually do. And then other revenues, um, it's a smaller amount of the budget, but the, those are things um, like um, interest income, um, that's that's a big part of it, is our interest income from taxes and penalties. So our, knowing that our spending plan cannot exceed our anticipated revenues, we know that our target budget amount is $23,518,765. That is the amount of the budget that was adopted last meeting. And here are some details on the spending plan. We have our budget total, budget to budget increase of 419,891. That's a 1.82% increase. Our tax levy at the cap that I spoke about the previous slide, that's a tax levy increase of 413,538. That's a 2.23% increase in the tax levy that we will be collecting from everyone. Now there's a projected tax rate increase of 2.25 percent. Um, it's projected and it's estimated because the taxable assessed value does not come out until August. So using a best guess, that is the projected tax rate increase. Um, usually there is um, some increase in the taxable assessed value each year, so it usually comes in a little less. And our tax levy increase is close to the projected tax rate increase because, as you can see, um, most of our budget to budget increase is funded by taxes. That's because from year to year, our other revenues stay consistent. We, we got about $15,000 in state aid revenue, and all of the other revenues pretty much stay flat. So whenever um, there is an increase to the budget, we do look for, for the tax levy increase to cover that. And would now be a good time, I know that we have talked in the past a lot about the 2% tax cap, and that's kind of been drilled into people's heads. And we're saying our projected tax rate increase is 2.25% which is not the 2% tax cap. Can you, is now a good time in your presentation to just that clarify? Be, yes, we can, we can discuss that. that. The 2% tax cap um, came about 
when they when we first um, started implementing the tax cap or the tax levy limit, and unfortunately that stuck because what the real guideline is is that um, it's two percent or the CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index increase, which this year was 1.26 to even complicate this further. But that is just part of, it's like an 11 step calculation to get to the tax levy limit for a school district. And everyone has different um, things that affect that. Uh, there's an increase in, in TRS or ERS, if that's over 2%, it's how much debt you have, how much debt you're retiring. So there's a lot of factors that go into the tax levy limit calculation. That 2%, which personally, I think it was a little bit of marketing to put that in everyone's head and because it's stuck, it worked. You know, it worked for all of these years. Um, the 2% is just a piece of it. We're not even touching that 2% this year because of the, the CPI is 1.26. But all of those different items um, in the calculation, and if I put the calculation up there, you wouldn't even be able to read it. The, everything is just so small to fit it all in one page. I think we showed it one, one time, and it was like, what's that? Um, so it, it 2.23 for us, and other districts are in a different situation, so their tax levy increase is not going to be the same as ours. Thank you. Okay. Um, so in presenting our budget in three parts, there are three, uh, the three components are the administrative component, which is 11% of our budget, the capital component, which is 14% of our budget, and the program component, which is 75% of our budget. Um, the administrative, uh, the things are, you know, pretty, pretty easy to understand when you're thinking of the title. The administrative is just that. The, the cost of principals, the superintendent's office, the business office, any administrative um, expenditures associated with those departments. The capital component is what it takes to run the district brick and mortar type items. Operations and maintenance are the primary um, components in that, and debt service. The program component, component is exactly it. Everything it takes to be in the classroom. Teacher salaries and field trips and transportation and all of those things that get the kids into the classroom. Um, I'm not going to read every figure and line on this, but um, if you go on Board Docs and on our website, you can see the presentation and it breaks down the different um, functions within each component of the budget. The administrative expenditures, the program expenditures, and the capital expenditures and the employee benefits appears in each component because the um, those benefits are broken out based on which salaries are in each category. We have a second proposition this year that we are asking the voters to vote on, a vehicle proposition. It's one big bus for $110,000 maintenance equipment of 40,000, which includes our um, lawn mower, the, the big lawn mower that um, Grounds uses to, for the entire campus. Total proposition of $150,000. It's funded through a ban, which is a bond anticipation note. It's a five-year debt instrument. Um, we have a high bond rating, so we get low interest on this five-year loan, and each year, as we ask for a vehicle proposition to be approved, it's because the fifth year of a previous ban is falling off the books and a new one can come on. This, um, these debt instruments are not sold until August, so um, the payment is not going to be due until the 1819 school year. 
buses does the school district have? Yeah, off the top of your head. It must be like 10 or 15. 10? We have a varied fleet. We do have, I think now we have about nine big buses. It's in here right. in the uh, in that section. Um, everything is is detailed here. We have nine big buses, six vans, six minivans, and one car. So that depending on where we're going and how many students are on the bus, we really try to match the vehicle so that you know we're not taking a big bus with two kids on it an hour away. Um, so we do have a varied fleet, which we're we were happy to to be able to do that. Um, there were some questions. Um, you know, why do we have to buy a vehicle every year? Why are you always asking us to for a bus proposition? Um, so the past plan which really isn't a plan at all. It's what bus is not going to pass DOT inspection and has to be scrapped. That's, that's kind of what the plan has been for a while. We had a plan, and that was the bus was in the base budget, and every year we could um, replace one as it was uh, whatever it needed to be replaced. When budget cuts came along, um, it was low-hanging fruit, and the bus prop was really the first to go. We suffered for a few years because uh, kind of really repairing a bus that was on its last legs. We were rotating them in. This one has to rest because it's, it's too old. Um, and we only have one bus mechanic, too. We get the high 90s or sometimes 100% passage rate on our DOT inspections which is fantastic we they acknowledge us every year for having such a high rate with some very old buses so I, I'm very proud of that department um, what we'd like to move back to is a vehicle replacement plan so that each year we do replace a bus that's not going to just have to be towed out we can get some uh, trade-in value. We can reduce repair costs because a newer bus doesn't have to be repaired so often. Um, also, because of the tax cap calculation, it's best not to have your bus in your base budget but a separate proposition so that it doesn't conflict with the tax cap calculation. Um, and as I mentioned before, we have a high bond rating, so it really is uh, fiscally responsible for us to borrow over five years instead of um, putting a $110,000 bus in the budget. So this bus is not going to be a propane. This is not going to be a propane. We are not recommending um, additional propane buses because um, Although for certain bus runs, they're great, um, we can't use them for all of them. If we can't take them on a long trip because we don't know if there's going to be a station to get propane when we get there, they need to be filled more often. So we can't take an entire trip on one tank, maybe. It depends on the length of the trip. Um, if we were going to get uh, more buses, we would have more propane buses. We really should look into having a, a station on campus to fill those buses with. Right now, it's very cost prohibitive to do that. So we have a couple, and we're enjoying them on runs that we should use them on, but we can't go full propane on our buses. Proposition number three is a capital outlay proposition for gymnasium and elementary school library renovations. What a capital outlay um, project is, is a $100,000 or less capital project that generates building aid. Our ratio is 34.6%. 
in the following year in one lump sum. So that's not, we don't have to wait 15 years to get a return on a capital project less than $100,000. Um, what's important to know in this proposition is that the money is already in the capital reserve. It's called the Facilities Improvement Reserve. We just need voter approval to allow us to spend it. There's zero tax impact um, because the full $100,000 is already in the reserve. But unless it was a true emergency, um, we can't spend it without voter approval. A reminder that uh, each year the uh, library levy, which is $73,150, is um, allocated for on everyone's tax bill. So that is a separate line item. Um, that's not going to go away. It's a perpetual levy that in 2015 was voted in and that's staying on. Um, this is the complete budget document. It is 84 pages long. It includes the Haldane report card, the fiscal summaries, um, all of the line items that were previously in this presentation, and a description of all of it. It's available um, at all the school buildings, the district office, the library, on the school website, and on board docs. Um, and we just ask that you come out and vote. Well, this might be our last uh, budget presentation. <laughs> Hopefully it is, right? Let's hope. Let's hope. Um, any questions from the board um, about the, the budget? Questions, comments? We're good? I just had a question mm -hmm. about, I mean, if you want to do it after, if you ask for public, um, just the getting the word out about the vote, like what's going on about that, like how, what are there ads, are we putting signs up? Um, yes, what we do, what we do every year is um, we, we're continuing to do. Um, we're also going to be uh, sharing some new resources or new ways of. We have a, a movie that's being made, just a small two two minute video that's going to be sent out, kind of explaining about the the budget and also talking about the the bond referendum. So I think that that's going to be kind of a new way of, of working um, to to share the information. And have you spoken to the PTA at all? Because I think that they in the past have been sort of the conduit right. for it's getting the word out. Um, they do a blacktop vote to see if they yep. want to support it. And then if they support it, then they go out and they say, support it. Right. Um, an, email, or an email blast like the day before, I mm -hmm. guess? The, to, to, to remind people that the, yeah. the vote will take place, yep. And also, I think we're holding the middle school concert that night. Mm -hmm. We will have the middle school concert will begin at 6.30. And um, the board meeting will begin about 8 o'clock that evening. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and I mean, this is our last meeting before the vote. So, oh, wow. yeah. a big fat reminder for people to go vote. <laughs> Polls are open from 7 a.m., correct, Julia? 7 a.m. to 9 p.m.? Correct. Um, if they're not, I, we're going to talk about this later, but if somebody is not registered to vote currently, the registration is on Thursday of next week, is that correct? That's correct, yes, from 4 to 8 in the middle school uh, lobby. Mm -hmm. And anybody who is a um, resident of, no, not Phillipstown because that would be Garrison, anybody who's a Haldane school community member can go vote. You have, yeah, you have to be uh, within the Haldane school district. Right. Um, which actually does include a small, teeny tiny portion of Fishkill. Right. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions from the board about the budget? When does the budget newsletter go out? The budget newsletter is at the printers right now, and as soon as we get it back, it will be going out. So, and it goes out to the entire community, um, and um, it's not just the parents. So. It should be happening. It's there. Probably get it tomorrow or the next day, mm -hmm. and it will go out. Mm -hmm. You can also post it on the bulletin board in the town. Mm -hmm. to remind them. Yep. Thank you. 
So there, there are many methods of communicating what the budget will look like. So. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions from the public about the budget? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, yeah, I just had a question about the um, the gymnasium and library. Sandy, would you just introduce yourself so we... Yes, Sandy McKelvey, parent. <laughs> um, I had a question about the $100,000 for the library and the gymnasium. Are there, is there a document that details what the money is going to be used for specifically for the gymnasium and the library? I can tell you that what it, it has been embedded in a number of uh, presentations that we've had um, and the dollar values, yes, there, that has been numerous times. Um, the, what's actually happening and as far as the dollar values, we can get that to you. Um, we're, we're putting new bleachers into the large, provided that the, it, we have a yes vote on releasing the funds. Um, new bleachers for the, the large gymnasium new pads for the large gymnasium, and we're rebuilding um, the, the seats and um, making it uh, more extensive than what already exists in the, in the library. And that's about it. But the dollar values are there. And I, as I remember, it's probably low 60s for the bleachers. Um, the additional components for the um, gym are, in, in addition to that, and a little over 20,000 for the library. Is that about is what? It just furniture for the library, or is there an architectural plan for? Um, There's an architectural plan. We're actually going to be rebuilding um, the by the windows the seat that's there, and it's been there for many years. So that will be pulled out. It will be rebuilt. There'll be multiple tiers, and um, we'll be uh, looking at potential cubbies inside, and we have to figure out exactly what it's going to look like. But yes, it will be our architect will will have the plans, and that's. That's about, it'll be slightly over $20,000 at this point. Are the, are the plans available now, or is that something else being worked on? Uh, I don't think we have them yet. No, we're, we're not going to invest in the project. We can't invest in the project until we know it's approved. Um, so, you know, as soon as it's approved, we have a concept, but we don't have actual plans. Okay, any other budget questions? Okay, so let's um, keep on going down the, the list here. Dr. Bowers. Okay. So um, for those of you who are just joining us, we had an announcement a little while ago that we do have a new high school principal and there we are reassigning our middle school principal to the high school. So Julia Sniffen will be joining us as our new high school principal on July 1st. Um, so we're very pleased to make that announcement this evening. So as we start talking about um, the budget and where we're going, um, recently um, released was our school report card and we'll be talking about um, the, the outcomes of the school report cards as far as instruction and um, other accountability measures including the testing. Um, but one of the things I wanted to bring up tonight is the fiscal accountability summary and this is a year delayed because they measure it from last year and that's what w is prepared this year. But for those of you who have been watching over the last couple of years, um, what they do is they compare schools that are similar um, to Haldane, um, which they call, which is in a similar schools group, which is basically that there's low need, which means um, that we're a financially stable district. And they look at the size and, and the, the demographics and they, they put you together with other schools of similar needs. And so one of the things I would like to highlight is the continuation of the fact that um, we educate kids um, for substantially less in similar schools. And it is in the budget newsletter that um, we're providing a blue ribbon education for, um, for in some cases, thousands of dollars less than similar schools. So this year for our general education student, um, the pupil per pupil expenditure was 12,660 for regular ed and similar schools at, was at 14,396. Um, special education, our expenditure per pupil expenditure is 36. 1,370, and for similar schools, it was over 39,000 at 39,462. So we continue to be able to provide the, 
the equitable and in some cases probably um, a substantial increase um, in services um, to our similar schools for less money. So I just wanted to point that out. And I congratulate Ann on her fancy footwork and all her calculations that allow that to happen. So a um, couple other things. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be asking Mr. Harrington um, to do is share with us. He has a couple of, as he does every year, um, a couple of ideas of uh, moving um, teachers into different grade levels. Sometimes the teachers request a grade level change. Sometimes it's because of the integrated co-teaching where you have two teachers that come together and they either they work well or they don't. In, in unison and we try to create the best pairs and um, there are a few um, changes where and this and again it happens every year where one teacher may move from one grade level to the next and and or they go back in one of the cases we have a teacher that would like to go back to the grade level they moved from so um, at the next meeting mr. Harrington will talk about that so I just wanted to introduce that um, tonight we had the Haldane Community Leaders Group come together and um, we come together a number of times a year and this is probably the meatiest agenda where we talk about the budget, we talk about other issues um, that are, are very current, one of which was the high, sp high school principal search and uh, made an announcement there. And a number of other things um, including the capital project that we've been talking about and the potential and potential board referendums. So, um, and actually, this community meeting we invited more than just the, the community, community leaders. leaders. Mm -hmm. um, we opened it to the entire community. Yeah, we invited anybody who has an interest. So, um, as we continue to hold these meetings, I think we should we'll continue to do that, and we'll put a, a, a invitation out to the entire Haldane community if they would like to join us. And um, there, there are interactive opportunities that um, allow people to ask questions and hear um, information that they might not have heard if they didn't watch a board meeting or they um, weren't present at board meetings. So this is just another venue for us to get the information out. Um, and um, as we were, we talked about all the things that we have talked about here and communicating about some of the things that are coming up within the next month or so. So it was a, it was a pleasant evening. Um, voter registration once again and I know that it was already announced but uh, Thursday on May 11th from 4 to 8 at the elementary middle school building lobby so if you have an interest in, um, in becoming a, a registered voter please join us uh, the annual district meeting which is our next meeting in the trustee election will be held on the 16th of May for, and this will start at 7 o'clock in the morning and go until 9 o'clock at night um, in room 105 in the, in the elementary middle school building, this one at the right by the, the bell lot. Um, and then the board will convene um, to hear uh, about approximately 8 o'clock after the middle school concert um, to hear the results of the vote. And so um, that will happen after 9 o'clock. We'll have a short board meeting before, and so please join us that night. We are um, in the process of organizing our discovery night, um, Thursday, May 18th um, at 6.30. So if you have an interest in learning about what we're doing here, please join us. Um, this is going to be a little bit smaller than last year, um, although last year was an extravagant, um, well-attended evening and we had so many things um, available for our community to see. I think it was a little bit too big. And I tried to get through the, into all the exhibits um, in, in that night. It just wasn't possible. So um, we're, we're going to scale down a little bit, and, but we do have a number of people that will be presenting that night. Um, a reminder that there is a makeup day on Friday, May 26th. And so what was going to be a four day uh, Memorial Day weekend is now a three day weekend, and we needed to use it for a snow day. Uh, the June 6th Board of Education meeting will begin at 6 o'clock rather than 7 o'clock um, here in the music room. And we have asked Mr. Solem um, to come in with his committee um, that created the, um, the idea of the Athletic Hall of Fame. And so we can further understand and better understand the philosophies that went into that, um, the creation of the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're going to have an interactive meeting for about an hour prior to the board meeting. Well, the board meeting will begin at 6, and then we'll just continue into the board meeting. So if you do have an interest in the Hall of Fame, um, and the, our committee will be there. The people that created the proposal will be here, and you can hear their thoughts and, and ask questions at that point. 
Diana, are we, is the board going to be voting at that meeting or is this just, this is just another opportunity for us to listen to the committee and comments from the community? That's right. The board isn't necessarily scheduling a vote at that time. No, that it's correct? just further information and I, I think that we have, we left the last meeting that it, where it was discussed um, with the feeling that we just didn't have enough information. And so Chris was here and he was explaining it, but I think that it's also important to have the committee come in and, and share their thinking. And the committee was charged with a, an opportunity to um, look into a, a new option for the district, and this is what they came up with. So this is their opportunity to share it with us. But I thought Great. this was something we decided we didn't actually vote on, that we were voting on, we were approving whatever part of it it goes into the athletic handbook i'm still confused as to why we're really voting on this whole I don't, thing yeah i didn't Myself, think we were voting honestly well it's it doesn't need it it really is at your pleasure i mean it this is a somewhat controversial issue and we wanted to make sure that the board was comfortable with it and so it can either be a conceptual nod or if you would prefer to vote we can do it that way the board approves the athletic handbook every year. That's right. Right. This would be going into the athletic handbook. Right. And, and it's a substantial change. Right. It's not like. Uh, I mean, I. That's why I still we don't we see said the point of it, it becoming yeah. part of the athletic handbook. But maybe that's gonna. I'm just waiting for the further presentations. Quite honestly, because I still haven't understood that concept. The athletic handbook mm. is complete standalone regarding the sports and the participation in the sports it has nothing to do with whether you're going to be awarded or so that's why i was kind of waiting to hear further details yeah. How hoping we to get on that um, because of this we have brought it um to the board on a number of occasions we've had multiple conversations right. with this and i and i still honestly and i i'm not sure if i'm the only one i still don't understand why we're voting on it and why it's becoming part of the handbook because they're completely two separate animals. It can be an addendum to the handbook and it can be something that is, I mean, that probably is a more appropriate place to put it, but it's something that will be governed by um, the, the athletic department and it, it has a direct relationship to um, what's going to be our annual um, opportunities for athletes and so that's the connection there. And you know, we're, the idea is just to make sure everyone's comfortable. We don't want this to be something that people feel that um, is not, has not been well explained, has not been um, discussed to the point that everybody has a comfort level. And so that's, that's the goal here. And so we, we thought of a more interactive conversation. And so that will, will be what takes place um, uh, at our next meeting, or be, for, excuse me, the first meeting in June. Yeah, I mean, I think there should be some form. I don't know, n know if it has to be an official approval, but I agree. There should be some type of sense of where the board stands on it as far as do they agree with moving forward with it or do we agree with moving forward with it or not. So I, I think there should be some sense of a, of a, of a, a nod. And it the of the board. Right. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a vote, but, we, but we're right. just ensuring that there's a comfort level and everybody is on the same page. Right. So just one, I'm sorry, uh, one, and one, just um, an agenda, I, as far as setting the agenda, because we, we've done a couple of these, like, every so often, like a special early meeting to go over a special point. Just maybe set the agenda specifically, like, make it from, like, 6 to 6.45, and then, then we reconvene at 7. So this way, people who, who really don't have any interest in being involved in or listening to it don't have to feel as though they have to come in because they don't want to miss the start of the meeting. Right. So just like, yeah, so set the agenda 6 to 6.45 yeah. and then reconvene at 7. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, and I'm taking a quick look at the district website under athletics, and I don't see the athletic handbook on the website. Is that, I don't know if it's something that should be on the website, but if we're talking about making this part of the athletic handbook, it would be great I don't think the athletic handbook should be on the website. We, we noticed the website. that at the last uh, parent meeting, yeah. and it was brought up, but it we hasn't made it, it onto the and, site. And it's also going to be, there will be substantial changes made this year, so this is one of Chris's um, things that he has on his docket for this summer. So I will. I don't think it's under 
athletics. I think it's buried somewhere else. Well, it's well, definitely we, not under athletics, and I wouldn't know where else to look for it. It should be under <laughs> athletics. And it's I sometimes could, it's and under district for handbook, resources or something. I didn't something. find anything there either. Oh, we can. And the code of it, conduct is it's on the, the website. It is, but it's not the full version. And, and she, I believe Linda did post uh, uh, or... I haven't checked actually since that meeting. Yeah, so I think that I've, but I'll d double check. I think it was recently the full. The code of conduct is under district resources. And I don't believe it's the abridged version anymore, or it could be both. But that's a good point because I mean, if we're talking about including the Hall of Fame into the handbook or not. Um, people should be able to know what the handbook says. And <laughs> I mean, is the Academic Hall of Fame part of the handbook? Is there an academic handbook, though? Um, no. Not exactly. It, 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 yeah, if there's a code of conduct. That's well, code basically of conduct. kind of yeah. what the athletic handbook is. It's an athletic code of conduct, basically. Mm -hmm. right. um, That's a very valid point. Mm -hmm. So in raising this question, is it something like, I think I've been clear that it's not, I, I certainly care about it to the extent that the community cares about it, and I want to make sure that I do what I need to do in terms of it. But are you raising this because you think that the board shouldn't? Do you, or is your point that you think, like, well, this is an administrative decision, and so the administration should make the decision? The right. Which is sometimes actually what we, I mean, we the talk about. Administrators got together, they formed a committee they you know we talk about getting involved in the weeds all the time right, right. that's um, what it, right. <laughs> so we will make the recommendation mm -hmm. you know the, and which has already been made we have made the recommendation right. and at this point um, that we know that there have been some thoughts that you've heard and you will right. probably continue to hear the recommendation has already been made to um, include the Hall of Fame as something new in the Haldane School District but we also want you to have a comfort level in it, so we're continuing the conversation. And we don't want anybody to feel that there was there was not opportunity right. to share information right. and right. Hear, have their thoughts be heard, right. and um, we want to make sure that you have the comfort level. Right. So um, where we weren't necessarily planning to have this pre-meeting after the last time, we thought it was a good idea, so we thought we'd bring it to one more discussion. And it does seem appropriate, even if we do decide that it isn't really the board's job to say yes, yay or nay, it, is, it has become a bit of a controversial issue. Um, so uh, I think it's appropriate for the board to c have a forum right. oh, for absolutely. the controversial yeah. issue to, to be discussed. Um, but I think it's a good point, uh, Laura. I don't, I don't know you know what just, what our role needs to be in it it's just something at that the i've end been of the thinking day. about quite yeah. honestly and i was hoping to just hear more about as yeah, you know yeah. we keep having these meetings and i'm just not sure where exactly that fits into a code of conduct type it but could be an it, addendum or it could even be a separate document i think the the whole how we actually how it actually proceeds beyond the point that we ha all are feeling comfortable with it um is really not the the issue how it how we all feel when we all feel comfortable is the issue and we want to make sure that happens and will, will this meeting address you know whether or not it will replace or not replace any existing type of awards that are given out that seems to be part of the controversy yes well actually and one of the things that you're going to hear is we really think it's two separate discussions Right. The creation of the Hall of Fame, we think, is something, and, and as I said, we've already recommended that it, that it begin, and um, there are other discussions um, about things that are related to it, but they do, one doesn't supersede or does not connect <coughs> the other. It, they're two separate issues right. that are very closely related. But that, that, I think, needs to be clarified. Right, that. and that will be part of it, but I do think it's important. Chris has been sharing the thinking of the committee, and I think it's a good idea for the committee to come in and share their own thinking, and so um, we can understand how they, what the, what the concerns were in certain areas. Um, Chris talked a, a, a little bit about that tonight at the community leaders meeting, which I think is helpful for people to hear, right. um, and that will be done, um, but there will also be other right. members here. But Because I, I don't know if it's fair to even put 
the, the, the Hall of Fame committee members in a position to have to address the issue with the Thousand Point Club because I, I, one has nothing know. to do with the other. Right. So they're two separate um, issues. You know, because somehow it, it got it got misconstrued. misconstrued that you know this was going to replace that wall and and that so I guess for the, that is not the case, correct? That is not the case. Yeah. So. And there were also there was also confusion and somehow the, the an understanding that things were going to be coming off the wall and that is not the case. Right. So and so that will also be discussed. But we just, you know, at right. this point, we're just trying right. to um, allow opportunities for people to hear the thinking and, and come with a, a level of comfort. And then how we proceed as far as the board or where it actually resides is a discussion that we can have that doesn't necessarily have to be here. We would like, I can tell you, I would like to make sure that the five of you are comfortable with it. Okay. Can we be sure to get that athletic handbook back on the on the website though because it's, I, have I it don't on know my how we can expect kids to follow the rules if they do, if they yeah. can't don't have access to the rules it's on my it's on the front sheet of here we brought that up at the last yeah. uh, parent meeting yeah. and I think it's time. it was yeah okay okay so any other thoughts with this no. Okay, so um, the June 20th Board of Education workshop will include recognition of uh, the teachers that are, will be receiving tenure um, and the this year's faculty that will and staff that will be retiring. And so we will congratulate and bid adieu um, to some of our um, friends that will be leaving and moving on to the next part of their life. So that will be on the 20th of June. Okay, uh, the information reports are here for everybody to view. Uh, is there any communication from the public at this time? Okay. Uh, about anything? About anything, yes. sure. <laughs> Please. So um, I wanted to come to the board meeting to describe a project that I worked on with the fourth graders this year. And um, some of you who don't know me, um, I am the chair of the garden committee and the coordinator of the farm to school program at Haldane. And so this year I did a program, a project, a, um, a true authentic learning project, long term project with the fourth graders with Mrs. Wendell's and Mrs. Prey's classes on um, maple sugaring. We piloted it last year with Mrs. Scroke's third grade class on a, you know, a, on a smaller level, but we really expanded it this year. And we started in October where we had the classes go into the Haldane Forest, the nature trail, which is um, not the James Pond trail, but the other trail that is um, behind the athletic field, I guess you would say. And so in October, they went and they identified trees when there were still leaves on the trees so they could identify the difference between a maple tree and an oak tree and other trees that are in the forest. Um, they did rubbings of the trees, as you can see on that little um, log book that the kids had. Every child had a log book, so when, whenever we went into the forest, they would, um, there were different things that they would be observing. So the first day, of course, we were identifying the trees. And then um, once we did identify the trees, we tagged all the, ma the maple trees and we found 20 of them. So um, we had the kids in each class pair up and adopt a tree in the forest. And so, um, so those kids would go to their tree and make observations about the tree. So for example, we wanted to know more or less what the age of the tree was. So they learned that if they um, found out what the diameter of the tree was, then they could determine the age. And of course, how do you determine the diameter of a tree if you don't want to chop it down? So they learned that you can, you can um, determine the diameter if you know the circumference, and then you use pi. So we did a, a lot of math with the fourth graders, which was really wonderful, learning um, math and science. And, and of course, it, it, um, 
it contributed to what they were learning in social studies because they were learning about Native Americans, and um, they learned how the early settlers learned about maple sugar th with the um, learning from the Native Americans. So um, from October to November, we did those kind of st studies. Um, we'd go out into the forest in December to see how things changed, and um, I read to them um, stories about Native American legends, and also if you're familiar with, with um, Little House in the Prairie series, um, there's a wonderful chapter on sugar snow um, from Little House in the Big Woods. So a lot of ELA components as well. And of course the most exciting part was when they got to tap. So we had a couple of experts come in. We had um, an expert from the Putnam Valley Audubon Society who came in and helped the kids learn how to tap a tree with the old fashioned brace, that used the old fashioned brace, and, um, and also some power tools as well, as well. So everyone got to use a drill and tap in the spiles and see how magically that sap started to run. And um, for two weeks, those fourth graders, and we also included the third, fourth grade class that wasn't able to do the project, but we let them through the library class um, do some collection, as well as Mrs. Skroka's class. So after two weeks of collecting, which we, um, w I delivered every day to the Taconic Outdoor Education Center because they partnered with us to process it all because it's a lot of sap <laughs> and a lot of boiling to do, so they boiled all the sap for us. And um, the chart that I just, I handed to all of you is a Google spreadsheet which all the classes shared with each other. So every day when they went out, they would check the temperature um, and also report where the temperature was in the evening because that's important um, to know what the evening temperature and the daytime temperature is um, as far as sap flow goes. And they measured exactly how many cups of sap they got from each tree. So we have a chart of about two weeks of sap collection, which we also share with the Taconic Outdoor Education Center. So um, it was a really fabulous experience. The kids had so much fun doing it. We also, um, I was also able to do a little demo for the kindergartners. So the two kindergarten classes got to see me tap the two giant maple trees. I don't know where it is, but the two giant maple trees over there that are up on the hill towards the, you know, the Merritt Building. Um, but anyway, it all resulted in this maple syrup that I. Um, that we presented to the fourth graders and the third graders that participated last week with a maple syrup breakfast in their classrooms. So it was a really exciting four months of true authentic learning and I just wanted to share that with all of you. And also I wanted to um, thank you because last fall there was some discussion about selling some of the property where we were doing our tapping because I know that there was discussion about a developer wanting to buy it. And I did reach out to Jen Daly saying, this is such a valuable learning part of our campus, our outdoor campus, outdoor education. And uh, please consider this you know, when, you t when you discuss the possibility of having this developer buy the land. And so I'm very, very happy that you didn't sell it so we can continue this project. I hope it continues um, for years to come. And, um, and I have a little bottle of syrup for all of you. So. <laughs> Is this the James Pond land? No. No, it's the oh, it's the, the White, White Hill. Hill. White Hill, gotcha. Oh, right. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good so we always so accept cute. gifts here at the school board meeting. <laughs> <You> do. <laughs> that is always welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That's great. Thanks for all your hard work. You're welcome. 40 to 1. That's a really, that's a lot of sap. Yes, it is. Okay, anybody else got any gifts for us? <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay, uh, correspondence. There's some letters here one from Mr. Dwyer, one from uh, Ms. Waldercheck. Is my saying her name right? Um, there for anyone to read who is interested. Um, a reminder, anytime a email letter uh, is sent to the full board, it is then considered public uh, correspondence, unless you tell us you don't want it to be. Um, but people receive an automatic.
You email to the board, yes. you receive an automatic reply reminding you of that fact. Yes. It's not it's not sneaky. Correct. It's yes. very, very explicit. Right. Yes. yes. And they have the option to, to, to ask us not to post that's it. Right, correct. Consent agenda minutes. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. We are discussing the minutes uh, from our meeting on April 18th. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent agenda financial uh, is next time around. Consent agenda personnel. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? We have some um, tenures, uh, conferral of tenures here to note. Um, and a um, probationary extension for Ms. Marilyn Granisi, who I believe is also up for tenure. tenure but she was on a maternity leave, so we're just including that into her probationary period. Right. Um, and we don't do the tenure celebration until later. This is just the uh, kind of the official um, approval. And for the public who is interested, uh, the administrators uh, presented their tenure recommendations to us, I guess, about a month or so ago at this point. Um, and I'll just say that every single one of these teachers who are receiving, uh, potentially receiving tenure if we all approve it, uh, everyone was really, really uh, excited and uh, proud to be recommending them. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, tenured teachers. OK, going into new business. Um, so last time around, we discussed, and I think we came to consensus for Wednesday, July 5th as our reorg uh, date. Does anybody have any changes to that? Is it still working for everybody? Yes? Good. So I think, do we need to do an official? Yes. Yes. Um, because it will allow us to be able to provide the public notice for this meeting. Thank you. So uh, the recommendation is that the Board of Education designates Wednesday, de July 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. as their annual reorganization meeting. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, our August business meeting, um, it's a little preliminary. Uh, we tend to wait until after the tax rate comes in. Any thoughts, Anne, on when that might be? Mid-August. Mid-August. So it's usually about the um, third, yeah, we should do it the third, third week. week. Yeah, it's August. usually when we do it. Uh, you know, and we have some time as summer travel, you know, gets uh, firmed up, but we could create a general date if we wanted to. So mid-August is the 15th, say, that's a Tuesday, so maybe sometime the following week so the following would probably be safe. The following week I am going college. to be going back and forth dropping off the college second. kids. Or the week of the 21st? Yeah. So like we week. could do something like it always week? works. I mean, we always do because I know for a fact because I worked that week. That's Regents Week, and we always do it that week. Yeah, and we've never had a problem. So, like August fifteenth. Oh, always oh, like, like, So it, if we did it, it on like the seventeenth. We always do it that week. Yeah, like the seventeenth. Like, well, we usually do it on a Tuesday. We usually do it on the Tuesday, but this, we can you know we can do the seventeenth if you wanna just play it safe. But right, Ann, because we we never have a problem. And for me too. Well, this year, I don't know what my schedule is that week. What? We did push it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did. So yeah, I would suggest if we can go a little later, maybe towards the Thursday. Thursday the seventeenth. Mm -hmm. How late can you go? Can, can we do it the last the week of August? Is that what you're thinking? Uh, Post. Well, I don't know. That's the week before yeah. Labor Day, so that might that not be good for. for me. Well, if we do it the beginning of the week, that's not. The last week would be better for me. So like, like the 28th? Tuesday the 29th? I mean, for me, but I don't know. Will right, that give us enough be, time? Well, My move-in's the week before. The bills are printed and um, out September 1st. Right. Okay, so maybe we should say Thursday, August 17th. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you know, 
If not everyone can be there, so be it. Right. We that, just need a quorum. That's the business meeting, right? Okay. Yeah. It's a very light meeting. It's a light meeting. And we can stay in touch about it as well as things yes. get. Okay. okay. That I might have to do at 7, though, because that's actually a Regent's Day. The 17th? Yeah, for me. So, like, if we're going to do it the 17th, I would have to do it at 7. I'm a fan of all meetings being at least at 7. Cool, because it said <laughs> 6 in, the, uh, in Google Docs. It, yeah. Yeah. Where? And here it says right, the twenty second, August twenty second at six. Year. Oh, last year's. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So seven o'clock on the seventeenth is a tentative. That's that's good. I was going to say maybe we should do it on the twenty second again, but Margaret's not going to be. Yeah, I've got to move in on the twenty third, and I move in on the twenty. I wrote one in at the 23rd and one in on the 24th. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that. Because <laughs> um, I thought it was the 21st and the 23rd. I thought I was going back and forth that entire week. All right, well, let's so go I for can... the 17th. Come yes. on, Margaret. Philadelphia. Yeah, this is seven, it, it's, 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 yeah but they're not moving in the same day. As long as we have day. a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen? It's going to be a rough couple of years for that week for me. Okay. Um, and then uh, our board retreat. So in the past, we've done this as like one long day in the summer. We've also done it as kind of a short day in the summer and a short day in like September, October. Um, hard to schedule for me right now that far away. But um, does anybody have any feelings? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We did like a nine to one, or actually, actually no, we did an a an afternoon or an evening because there was some travel. We did like a Friday, like yeah, on here. One three to, six to seven or something. On a Friday, like that. we did one to six on yeah. a Friday. We did one to six on a Friday. Oh, one to six on Friday, right? Mm -hmm. And then at five thirty to nine in mm -hmm. September. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you like to do it the day after we have the meeting, the eighteenth? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to do that time. No, I wouldn't be able to do that. Time. You're not going to get that week at all. What about that week, um, that last week in August? Wait, you're not here the week of August 17th? All right, so then why don't so, we just But it's one of us. Yeah, but well, because one of us. One of you would have to meet on one, to miss one week, and one of you would have, have to miss to the other week. So. so Jen said we just need a quorum, we so need a, yeah. we need three of us. All right, well, I will firm up these dates then, and then maybe we can pick one of those, one of the days the following week to make sure you're here. Okay. The following week, which week? The twenty. Like the twenty second. But that's hard for. But see, there's a chance I might not be there, so yeah. I'm just. So it's. No. I'm just, I don't know. You know, I'm just saying it's possible. So. Um, okay, so we're thinking about maybe doing like the retreat that last week of August. That works. Like Friday the first of September. Mm. No. That's they, Labor Day. That no. Labor Day we do it, don't no. we usually do it like the first? We usually do it like the first week of August. Yeah, last summer is it's where it summer August is. 12. Yeah. Actually, I know. Last week we did it August twelfth because I had a proposal to do that day. So maybe like Friday, <laughs> August fourth. I can't. I can't, I can't do that week. Okay. Can we do the twenty eighth of August? Twenty eighth Monday. No. Mm -hmm. No. Not, not All right, day. how about we do at that? Night I could. At night. Mm -hmm. At night I could. Because everybody. I could works. do 530, like that kind of thing, but I can't do that. Like 6 to 9. 6 to 9, August 28th. That and works. And then we'll pick out another date. Don't we usually have, like, part? some of it's usually, like, in the day, somewhere nice. <laughs> we do it in August, yeah. Like, but. Yeah. But people have daytime jobs. I know. <laughs> I mean, we, could, <laughs> we have done Saturdays. We haven't done we did, a Saturday. Yeah, we did Saturday. We usually too. Used, used to do Saturdays, so Saturday, or Sunday. So that's the twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. Yeah. Twenty eighth. Monday, the twenty eighth. Six, six to nine. nine. Let's let's do it. 
It was good, you guys. I was about to give up. I was about to say, let's just email about it. <laughs> okay, that's great. Okay. okay. August 28th, board retreat, 6 to 9. It could still be someplace nice, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> sorry. Under the stars. Okay, cool. Um, any further communication from the public? All right, so I'd like to make a motion to convene into executive session for the purpose of discussing collective negotiations. Um, may I have a second, please? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.